Hello, Algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here, and we are into our fourth review video. This one's on inequalities and absolute value inequalities, namely chapter three. Now, inequalities are so very much like equations. You want to listen to Saddam, etc. Okay, but there will be one change. It won't show up in this first problem here but it will show up in this problem here. And if you look at the two equations, you can probably tell. So remember, I'm going to listen to Saddam. I'm going to add 4 to both sides because my goal is to get the x alone, the variable in this case. And I will have a 3x is less than 14. And I'll divide by 3. And I'll probably go mix a number on this one because on a number line, it makes more sense to me. It looks like it's going to be 4 and 2 thirds. Now, I'd like to draw a picture, right? Okay, I have to show 4 and 2 thirds. If I'd like, I can show other numbers. Maybe I'll show 5 here, and I'll show 4 a little bit further, try to make it look like it's uh, spaced out correctly. I need an open point at 4 and 2 thirds because it's not equal to, and I always test blank is less than 4 and 2 thirds. Give me a number that makes that true. Well, how about 0? So I will shade towards 0. Remember, don't try to use a little shortcut. Oh, it's pointing a certain way. Always put a blank there and test. All right. Okay, coming over here to this one. Well, I got to get rid of the 7. It's a positive 7, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And that will allow me to have negative 2x is greater than or equal to 20. By the way, dropping this negative is a very common mistake among students. Notice. I brought the negative down with the 2. It's not a 2, it's a negative 2. All right, and so I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. B do, B do, B do. X is going to be less than or equal to. Notice the inequality flipped. Why? Because I divided by a negative. If I ever multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality flips. All right, 20 divided by negative 2 is negative 10. And. I'm going to put negative 10 there. All right. Uh, maybe I'll show negative 9 and negative uh, 11. I need a close point because it's equal to, and again, I test. Blank is less than or equal to negative 10. Well, negative 11 would be less than or equal to negative 10, and so I shade that way. All right. Now, we also have things called uh, compound inequalities. Sometimes they look like problem three here, and sometimes they look like problem four. And problem four is one problem. I seem to remember that when some of you uh, did problems like number four on a test way back, you uh, like treated them like two separate problems. Well, you might solve them as two separate problems, but you would put them on one number line. All right, so let's solve this first one here. I want to get x alone. It's in the middle. I want to get rid of this negative 1, I'm going to add 1. But I have to do it to all three sides, so to speak. And so I'll get 6 is less than 3x, which is less than 12. Now I divide by 3, divide by 3, and divide by 3. Had I divided by negative 3, both inequalities would have flipped. All right, so I get 2 is less than x, which is less than 12. If I want to go 2 is less than blank is less than 12, that will tell me about my shading. So I'm going to get a number line going here. I'm going to have to show 2. I'm going to have to show 12. Now, I'll have open points on both of them. And let me fill in a number that makes this true. Well, 2 is less than 4. 4 is less than 12. So the shading will be in this area. It'll be between the two points. If I would have picked a number, say, over here, like instead of 4, maybe I pick 15. Notice if I put 15 in there, 2 is less than 15, but 15 is not less than 12. So notice 15 is not shaded. I need to need a statement that will make them both true. Excuse me, a number that will make both parts true. All right, for number 4, it's very similar. Uh, I'm going to solve this part, minus 1. I get 2x is greater than 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2, I'm going to get x is greater than 4. Or, now here I'm going to add 1. 
height, I'm going to get 4x is less than negative 6. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x is going to be less than negative 1 and a half. Right? That would be the same as negative 3 halves or 1 and a half. So, if I mark down 1, negative 1 and a half, positive 4, looks like they're both open points because they're not equal to, and the numbers that are greater than 4 are to the right of 4, the numbers less than negative 1 and a half are to the left of negative 1 and a half. And there you go, that's compound inequalities. All right, now let's talk about absolute value inequalities. Remember, we have to misread this. We have to call this a less than, right? This is an and, okay? And this is going to be misread as a great or problem. So, remember, it is absolutely incorrect to do this. You cannot do an operation through an absolute value ever, 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 ever. The first thing you do is you take the absolute value. And how do you do that? You break this up into two inequalities. So the first will be 2x minus 4 is less than 12. And 2x minus 4 is greater than negative 12. Now you can solve the two pieces at 4. 2x is less than 16. x is going to be less than 8 divided by 2 in case you're wondering. All right, over here I'm going to add 4, and I'm going to get 2x is greater than negative 8, and that'll make x greater than negative 4. So I need all the numbers that are less than positive 8 and greater than negative 4. Well, when I put that on a number line, I'm going to get negative 4, then I get 8, the numbers that make both true will be in between. Remember, ands look like that almost always. All right, this one over here, again, I have to split it up into two, inequali or two inequalities. I cannot start doing operations inside of the absolute value. I'm not erasing that work for any reason other than I just don't want it to interfere with the new work I'm going to show you. So I break this up into two First being 3 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 13, or 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to negative 13. And now I solve. I subtract 3, and I get negative 2x is greater than or equal to 10. I divide by negative 2 on both sides, and x will be less than or equal to negative 5. Or, come over here and I subtract 3, and I get negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 16. I divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. x is going to be greater than or equal to 8. All right, so now remember in ors, only one of them ends up being true at a given time. So negative 5 is here, 8 is here. So they're both closed points because they're both equal to. All right. And on this one, I need greater than 8, which would be this way. And on this one, I need less than or equal to negative 5, which is to the left of it. And there you go. Okay. Now, these two are really easy problems, although some of you will do them wrong. We want to make these two look like the previous problems. See, right now, this has a 2 here and a 5 here. We don't want those. We're going to listen to Saddam and get rid of the 5 first. And some of you are going, Mr. Lawrence, you can't do that. you got to get rid of the absolute value. No, I'm getting rid of the stuff around the absolute value first. And then I'll break up the absolute value into two equations. All right, so that's going to be 26. Now I'm going to divide by 2. And divide by 2. And I'll get absolute value of x minus 3. It's going to be equal to 13. Now, it looks like those equations I, or inequalities I just did, I'll take the absolute value of x minus 3, which will get me x minus 3 equals 13, or equals are always done as ors, by the way. 
x minus 3 is equal to negative 13, and I will solve for x. I'll get x equals 16, or x equals negative 10. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and test these just to prove to you that they work. I'm going to put 16 in here. 16 minus 3 is 13. Absolute value of 13 is 13. 13 times 2 is 26. 26 minus the 5, 21. See, it works. If I put negative 10 in, I get negative 10 minus 3, which is negative 13. Absolute value of negative 13, 13. Times 2 is 26. Take away 5, 21. There you go. All right, I'm going to leave this one for you to do. Do it on your own. Pause the video. I'll run through my solution real quick. Here comes my solution. You know, I'm bothered by this negative, but let me get rid of these first. And so I'm going to get 3 times the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than negative 3, and then I'll divide by 3. The inequality here will not flip because I did not divide by a negative. I divided into a negative, but that's not the same thing. And now I have the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than a negative number. Now this is going to end up being all real numbers. But in case you don't see it, I will break it up into an x plus 2 is greater than negative 1, or x plus 2 is less than 1. All right, I'm going to solve that. I'm going to get x is greater than negative 3, or x is less than uh, negative 1. So I need to show negative 3, and I need the numbers greater than negative 3, and they're this way. Or I need the numbers less than negative 1, and those numbers are to the left. And since only one of them, one part has to be true at any given moment, that means the whole thing ends up being true. The whole number line gives us a true statement. If you take those values, negative 3 and negative 1, and plug them into the inequality, they're going to work they're going to make the statement true. If I pick a number outside, like say 10 over here, I'll get a true statement. If I pick negative 2, which is between them, I'll get a true statement. And if I pick like a negative 12, I'll get a true statement. So in other words, I'm going to be shading the entire number line. All right, I think that's it for the video. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.